Welcome back. We are ready to jump into our second segment of this show, and it is a specific strategy to help our viewers pay less in taxes. Is that right, Patrick? That is correct. That second leaf is the Roth conversion. Now, a Roth conversion is different, though, from a Roth contribution. It is. Um, and the Roth conversion strategy is becoming, again, very, very popular. There's a lot of information on the Internet about it. Advisors are talking about it. And it's a way to, to reduce taxes going forward. And, but it can be confusing because there's also a Roth contribution, and then you have the Roth conversion. And when I have conversations with viewers and clients, it, it's constantly confused, and they, they mix the two up. So I think to start this, this segment, we really want to explain the difference between the two. So we have a Roth contribution. That's where we take money that's in our checking account, it's after-tax money, we've already paid taxes on it, and if you're over 50 years old, you can put $7,000 a year into the Roth IRA account, and that money grows and compounds tax-free forever, right? You don't have a required minimum distributions. When your beneficiaries inherit it, they inherit it tax-free, so there's a lot of pluses with the Roth IRA. Now, there's income limitations, uh, if you make too much, you're capped out, you can't put money in. Uh, a lot of 401ks now have a Roth side to it. So it's important to get money into a Roth IRA, especially when you're younger, because it's one of the only accounts we can use where our money grows tax-free. But then there's the Roth conversion, and that's where you take some of your existing IRA money that you've that is pre-tax dollars, you take some of that money out, you pay tax on it today and then redeposit it into the Roth IRA where it again will grow tax-free forever for your use or when your beneficiaries inherit it, it's tax-free as well. So it's important not only to make Roth contributions if you can, if you qualify, but it's important maybe early in retirement to make uh, Roth conversions as well. Can you talk about an, an example sure. of how you incorporate that, of how you make that happen? The message that I like to give my clients is that, believe it or not, this is going to go against all the grain and all the conversation of building up your IRAs as big as possible. My approach is don't, maybe don't let those IRAs get too big because the bigger your IRA balance is, the bigger your required minimum distributions are at 72. That could force you into a higher tax bracket when you're 72 and in your, in your retired. Think about it, your social security's coming in, your pension's coming in, and now you've let those IRAs get huge and your distributions are gonna be bigger. I recently just had this conversation with a client of mine, and, and I think it's a great example, so I'd like to share it with the viewers. I had a client call me, and I'm managing her IRAs, and she's in her 60s, mid-60s, and she's collecting a, a spousal Social Security check, a small Social Security check. She'll switch to hers at 70, and then she's working part-time. And she has about a million dollars in her IRAs. So her qu first question was, you know, when and how do I start taking money out of my IRA? You know, I don't need it now, but I want to know the rules. I want to know what to do. So whenever we have this conversation, it's always know the rules. So the first rule of taking money out of the IRAs is the required minimum distribution. And that's roughly 4% of the account value, okay? Whether you need it or not. So in my example, my client has roughly a million dollars. If it doesn't grow at all for the next seven years, she has to take out $40,000 a year. Add that to her bigger Social Security check. Will that throw her into a higher bracket than she is today? We looked at it. It looked like it could, all right? But that's if the IRA stays where it is. If the IRA grows to $1.5 million, her RMD is now $60,000. An IRA at $2 million is $80,000. So start doing the math. The bigger the IRA, the bigger the RMD, throws you possibly into a higher bracket. That's if rates stay where they are right? We've talked about rates, could go higher. The idea is she doesn't need money out of the IRAs now. Let's slowly get money out of the IRAs, pay the lower tax rate that we know she's in today, redeposit that money into the Roth IRA where it grows tax-free forever for her use or for her daughter's use. 
and then it can grow in that account. If her daughter inherits it, it can grow in there for another 10 years. It's a strategy that helps beneficiaries. It helps accumulate money tax-free for yourself. You still have the money in the IRA that you still have to meet your RMDs with, but it's a slow process, it's a gradual process, it's not you know, something you do in big chunks. As I'm hearing this story, I'm just thinking about the importance of timing in all of this, yes. right? As we've discussed in a previous show, the accumulation phase is right. a big phase. And right. you, you, know, you try and put money into that pot exactly. early on. But you really have to think about timing of it all and right. the Roth, right. the right Roth. Right is the one that you really want to focus on. So Correct. talk a little bit more about that, that Roth bucket sure. and how important it is to focus on that as you're talking about right. the conversions sure. versus the contributions. 100%, I mean, think about it. We're working, we're throwing all this money into our 401ks and we have to, when we look at our 401ks, we have to consider taxes, right? There's, I like to say there's a tax lien slapped on that account. We have no idea what the tax rate is. We have no idea what that lien is because we don't know tax rates in the future. So by building up our Roth IRAs, we're just hedging the bet. We're just hedging that rates will be higher in the future. We don't know, nobody knows. If they go lower, okay. You've got all this, all this other money still in your IRA to take out at a lower rate. It doesn't work for everybody. Um, you know, it, the, the, the RMD might not throw you into a higher bracket, but if it does, let's start dripping money out of the IRA, put it into a Roth, now you've got a tax-free bucket of money. That can grow tax-free. <laughs> 100%, yes, for, forever, because you don't have to take money out of it, and it can go to your beneficiaries, your children, tax-free to them as well. You've said this several times in the show and last week as well, that everyone's different. Everyone's oh, yeah. situation is different. Correct. And so someone watching this might say, oh, right. that's for me, or that's right. not for me, and that is right. maybe true. Right. So what, what is the best course of action for them? Well, it, you know, if the viewers have an interest in having this type of discussion, they can give us a call 410-599-3300. That's our local number. Or they can just scan the QR code that's on the screen. There, my calendar is up there. They can grab one of the appointments and we can sit down. You know, there's no cost, no obligation. Don't bring a checkbook. Um, you know, we're not, we're not selling anything. We're just trying to educate and inform individuals who are preparing for retirement. It's important to have someone to talk to about this because who, who else will you right. have this conversation? Right. Well, with? and think about it. A lot of accountants pay by the hour. You know, a lot of people are afraid to talk to their accountant about planning because it's going to cost them something. You know, uh, uh, an accountant is a pr preparer from January 1st through April 15th. They prepare taxes, but you have to meet them after April 15th through December 31st to do some planning. And that's what I feel a lot of people aren't doing the planning part. That's where I could come in.